the next part of the pulmonary examination that we'll demonstrate is the technique of auscultation. For auscultation, you're going to also start at the top of the lungs and also compare side to side as you auscultate. Um, you also use the diaphragm of your stethoscope rather than the bell. Again, use the diaphragm of your stethoscope to auscultate. When you auscultate, you're listening for breath sounds, and breath sounds are normally located at specific locations. Vesicular breath sounds are heard over most of the lung fields, peripherally. They are soft and low-pitched, and inspiration is longer than expiration. Bronchial breath sounds are heard best over the manubrium. They are loud and high-pitched, and expiration lasts longer than inspiration. Tracheal breath sounds are best heard over the trachea in the neck. They're very loud and harsh, and inspiration equals expiration. Bronchovesicular breath sounds are best heard between the scapula especially on the right side. They're intermediate in both volume and pitch, and the length of inspiration equals the length of expiration. Again, when you auscultate the lungs, you'll ask the patient to grab their shoulders, again, to move the scapula laterally to increase the area of lung fields as you can auscultate. The patient will have his mouth open and breathe normally initially. Take some slow breaths there. It's very important to keep your stethoscope on the chest wall during the entire respiratory cycle. The patient needs to complete an entire inspiratory and expiration cycle. When expiration is complete, move your stethoscope quickly to the opposite side. If you are not able to hear breath sounds adequately when you begin, ask the patient to take somewhat deeper breaths. I can also refer you to Dr. Chandrasekhar's physical exam on the lumen to hear examples of bronchial, bronchovesicular, and other breath sounds. If you did hear abnormalities in a specific area of your auscultation, you can also check for transmitted breath sounds over the same area. For example, I would expect to hear vesicular breath sounds in this area. If I heard bronchial breath sounds instead, that would be abnormal. And this time, I, there's three maneuvers I can listen for. So with my stethoscope over the area where I heard an abnormality, I'll first ask that to just repeat 99, 99, 90. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. As you move at the scope to different regions, uh, in a normal lung, 99 is muffled and indistinct, but in a consolidated or airless lung, the 99 becomes loud and clear. The next maneuver is to listen for a whispered pectoriloquy. So again, I'm going to listen in the area where I heard the abnormality, and this time then I'm going to ask you just to whisper 99 over and over.
Again, in normal lung, this is heard very faintly and indistinct, but in a consolidated or airless lung, 99 is heard loud and clear, and we then say that the patient has whispered pectoriloquy. The last uh, transmitted sound to check for, I'm going to ask that to just kind of say in a high-pitched voice, E, and I'm going to listen over that same area. So you can say E, E, E. Good. In normal lung tissue, the E sound is faint and somewhat indistinct, but again, in an airless or consolidated lung, the E sound changes and sounds more like an A, a nasal A sound. This change of sound from E to A is called egophony. There are also extra sounds that you may want to be aware of. We call these sounds adventitial sounds. By that we mean that they're added or extra breath sounds and you normally would not hear those in a lung examination. These adventitial sounds can either be discontinuous or intermittent, in which case we call them crackles, or they can be continuous. If they're relatively high pitched, they're known as a wheeze. If they're relatively low pitched, we call them a ronchi. Sometimes ronchi is can clear if you ask the patient to cough and then repeat the examination and listen in the same area. Oftentimes an asthmatic who's having an acute attack will demonstrate findings of wheezing. Again, I'd just like to remind you of a few key points whenever you do the pulmonary exam. Number one, the examination is always done on skin. It's never done over an article of clothing or a gown. Number two, it helps to have the patient grab their shoulders to move their scapula laterally to increase the examinable area of the lung fields. Number three, we always use the diaphragm of our stethoscope when we're doing the pulmonary examination. The room, of course, must be quiet. There can't be extraneous noise from a TV or visitors or guests in the room. If the TV is too loud, turn it off or ask visitors to leave so you can do an adequate lung exam. Again, ask the patient to breathe through their mouth and just to breathe normally initially. But if you're unable to hear the breath sounds, then ask them to take deeper breaths as you listen and auscultate the lung fields. And again, remember, don't move your stethoscope too quickly from one side to the other. Let the patient go through a complete respiratory cycle before you move your stethoscope. The common mistake would be that students move before the patient's completely finished exhalation. And again, always compare right to left, right to left at any given level, and start at the top of the lung fields. Remember to perform all the steps of the lung exam, inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation on the entire chest, this means anteriorly, laterally, and posteriorly. If you only do the steps posteriorly, you will mostly hear the left and right lower lung sounds. You will miss the right middle lobe completely if you only listen posteriorly. Finally, remember to check for trachea position when in front of the patient. I can refer you back to the thorax video if you need to review this step. I hope you found this video to be helpful in demonstrating the steps of the lung examination. You will now go to the examination rooms in the Clinical Skills Center and practice on each other doing these steps under the guidance of a senior medical student. Good luck. Mm -hmm.